then I've got to take a look at her. And I'm so happy that I did because she has a wealth of information on spirituality, geopolitics, what's really going on in the world today, and so much more. And this is going to be our first conversation together, other than just doing a quick mic check. So without further, well, let me just say this. There are so many people who are just discovering that there's something wrong with um, governments, not only ours, but around the world. Uh, elections, fraud. I mean, the list is a scroll that you'd have to roll out that would take days to just cover everything because we have not been shown the truth about everything. And that has been a slow drip. And now it's becoming a stream of information and it's breaking into mainstream media, which was the plan all along. And so this journey for us has taken a lot longer than we had anticipated. And yet, can you imagine if you're brand new trying to find out the truth and discovering that, you know, everything that you learned growing up has been a lie? Well, most everything. People were raised with some good values and um, spirituality, et cetera. Yet as we move closer to the big transition, um, and all the lies being exposed, uh, including, you know, voter fraud, COVID, et cetera, then we want other leaders to unite in love, peace, and harmony to be able to help assist people who are just waking up with their emotional, spiritual, and, um, you know, just being able to cope and navigate these challenging waters. And it's so much easier when you're in a community who knows the truth, who speak from their heart, who are guided from the divine spirit and also bringing their voice. It takes a great courage to stand up or sit down in our case and be able to navigate these waters while we're all learning and discovering too. So it helps to have a community the community bands together and makes a bond. And these relationships, I believe that one of our greatest superpowers is the relationships that we cultivate within ourselves of love, self-love, spirituality, and peace, and then join together with other people to exchange notes, to find out what they know that we didn't, and or maybe, yeah, I got that too. So, this journey has been 35 years for me in just a small part of it, the whole financial part, the IRS and Washington, D.C., all that I found out a long time ago. And so I did what I could to work within the matrix at that time because I didn't know it was a matrix completely. However, Tressie did know there was a matrix long before me. And without further ado, I want to bring her on and welcome to her viewers. We're looking forward to being able to ask her questions at the end or throughout. Welcome, Tressie. Aloha. Hello from sunny Texas, 74 degrees after being down to 11 this week. So we're pretty happy. Oh, I'm I have bet. a little picnic after the meeting here. Oh, so uh, I have to let you in on a little joke. We, uh, we keep saying before our trek, where's the pan? And so everybody's like, the pan? What is the pan? So today, Shelly was looking for the infamous pan, and she goes into the kitchen and goes, Tressy, you used the pan. What's the pan? Yeah. So um, it's not a calm, but I'm going to say, okay, Anan, Anans, <laughs> go for it. What is the pan? What in the heck is it about, right? So when Shelly um, was out for a minute um, and I was getting ready, I just started cracking up about the pan and the fact she she was so serious. <laughs> Pressy, you used the pan. And I laughed so hard I cried. I guess you got to be here. You got to know what's up. But anyway, it'd be fun to to see what people think the pan is. I have no idea. This is the yeah. first time hearing about the pan. <laughs> you know, it's funny. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure meeting uh, Shelly earlier on screen for the first time. And she lives close by to you next door or something like that. And how lovely is that? Allison, our producer, we've never met. 
up until oh, now. Nice. So we have a total screen relationship. <laughs> So if you're ready, we will just dive in. And you look beautiful. I love yeah. your hats that you wear. Thank you. Thank you. you know, um, as I've said before, my hats are inspired by my mother. So when she died, I inherited all her hats. Of course, I had my own as well. But every time I wear one of her hats, I feel close to her. I, I feel warm. And, you know, I just love wearing them. And... Um, there, it's quite a long story with her and I, but it ended the most beautiful as far as the two of us are concerned that it could possibly. And and I think maybe if I can remember the day when I'm going to post a picture of her on the beginning of a that the apple does not fall from the tree, that she was, uh, she was a hoot. I mean, she, she had a character about her. It was pretty fun. And we, we got together. We had so much fun together. So anyway, that journey to get to that point uh, took a long time. And so what I would like to talk about today is reset. And we know that the reset is coming. And it's not just the financial, it's every area of life, um, cultural, uh, every way, worldwide, every area of our lives is being reset. The government's being reset, everything's being reset all at the same time. And that's partly why the financial reset is taking so long, because they're actually doing everything at the same time. And all the parts need to come together at the same time. And it's it's really an impossibility, except for God and the armies of heaven being involved. I mean, this is a not just a global war, but the the whole armies of heaven, the entourage of heaven are involved in an intimate, active way, even your loved ones that graduated, um, you know, the, the earthlings talk about it as they died. They didn't die. There's no such thing as death. They're more alive than we are. And so it's just a movement from this realm into that realm. And we can actually access that realm. So they are very active. They are involved. They all have a purpose and a job to do in this great universal reset that is happening. I mean, it, it's the most incredible thing. It's an incredible time to be alive. Everybody says that, but I don't think we actually grab right. how big it is. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, we've, we've actually seen what my mother was doing. She was in a kitchen and she was making French pastries. I mean, they were Petaphors and just beautiful pastries. And she was very intent and very serious about what she was doing because she was preparing a feast for the end of the war. And there was this, it was like one wall of her kitchen had these domed um, doorways with no door. And she kept going to the door and looking out to see if it was time, like she was so anxious. Wow. So anyway... That was a beautiful, beautiful um, view that we got to see, my sister and I. So anyway, um, I am a dreamer. I have dreams that come true. I get full names in dreams, and a lot of times it's political. And um, last night I had a dream. Mm. And I, it, it was a simple dream. And I didn't understand at first, but when I meditated on it, as I was meditating on this message today, I'll probably cry because it's so passionate. Good. Because it's passionate coming from God. And, um, so in this dream, the simple fact is that I was walking along a path, even going to a building, and wherever I went, there were clinics on the ground, everywhere on the ground. Wow. And I was picking up the Kleenex mm -hmm. and I knew, you know, when I woke up, I went, oh, okay, because I am drying the tears 
of the Patriots along the journey. And uh, that's what I kind of want to do today is I want to tell you some secrets, some beautiful things. So the first thing I'm going to tell you, it, and it may seem sad at first, but just it, it is the doorway to life, like the most incredible life. Like I am a walking miracle, and so are you. But but I don't know if you realize how amazing you are. I don't know if you realize that you glow. Right now, light is shooting through every hole. You feel like you're full of holes? Well, every hole that you have, light is beaming through, right? You are an incredible miracle of light. And so my life... Um, you know, I have done a lot of work with the Native American tribes, and they all say, you are Cherokee. And, you know, the high cheekbones and the fact that I'm prophetic, that I know things before they happen, it, that's a sign of the Cherokee nation. And, you know, the, the Cherokee went on the trail of tears, you know, and that's what I've done. My whole life has been a trail of tears, starting from day one, as many of you know. My mom uh, was a teenager. You know, she was 19. Um, she already had one baby uh, who was three and a half years old. She did not want me at all. She was didn't want any more children because she raised her siblings. And she had a horrible childhood, a horrible life where <clears throat> she was not safe. And um, so I didn't know what she had done. I, my life was so um, hard from forever. I, I don't remember it ever being easy. And I didn't know why. I just thought there was something wrong with me. Like, I'm just not good enough. I just need to get it together and I need to do better. And I was really hard on myself and I even hated myself. And then one day, about 15 years before she died, she came to me and she said, I have to tell you something. She said, I abused you. I did not want you. I abused you from day one when you came home from the hospital as a newborn. I abused you. And what I did to you is so bad I can never tell you. And through different stories that she told me that didn't seem like bad stories, God knit them all together one day as I was going through an inner healing. And he showed me what how bad it was in part. I don't know everything, but but in part. And because of the trauma that I went through, I almost died at six months. And it was um, pneumonia. And the emotional root, there's an emotional root, root to every physical issue. And that emotional root for pneumonia is, I can't take the trauma anymore. You give up. You just give up. And as a little baby, I just gave up. And um, but, but God sent me back. And I was not happy he did that. I did not want to come. I, I fought even being born. I fought so hard. I got the cord wrapped around my neck multiple times because I knew what she was going to do. I knew what she was like. I knew what she had been saying out loud. <clears throat> and anyway, um, as a newborn, you know, your spirit is fully formed and you began to make judgments or um, you come to a conclusions about life. And my conclusion was, if I cry, no one's coming. Because she told me, I never held you. I didn't do eye to eye. I, I only did what I had to do. I propped the bottle up and, um, you know, I fed you like she had seven children. I was the only one that was, was bottle fed. And so she said, I would just prop it up and I would shut the door. And if you cried, I would not come. I never held you. And, you know, that if babies that are not touched die, and there's a reason I didn't die. And there was a point that I was trying to, you know, I've been trying to heal my life, my whole life. <laughs> and, uh, and I was going through an inner healing and I said, God, why? Why? You knew she was going to be like that. Why would you send me to her? 
And so I said, I need to hear from you. You need to tell me, explain this to me. And he did. He said, I knew that your parents could produce you. And the fact is that I wanted you. I brought you there because they could produce you and I wanted you for me. And I ended up being only his in the end. And so I said, well, what about the trauma? I mean, you say that you're always there with us and, you know, you, you answer before we call. What about the trauma that I went through as a baby? And he said, I like, I'm glad you asked that. He said, I came for you every time. I knew she was coming to hurt you. I took you away because the real you is a spirit. You just live in a body. You are a spirit being. I came for you every single time. And I took you away with me into the real world of the kingdom every time. I always provide a way of escape. That's what I did. And you and I, we had adventures. I took you and I put you in my womb like I was pregnant with you. You came from me. And I sent you to that family like a good and perfect gift and you were gift wrapped and they didn't even open it. They returned to sender unopened, but you have to understand the important part of that sentence. They returned to sender and I am the sender. That means it's proof that you belong to me. And so he said, I just put you back in my womb. Sometimes when uh, I took came for you, I put you in my heart. If that's where you needed to be so you could hear my heartbeat, that's where I put you. And so I began to work with um, people with split personalities, DID, dissociative identity disorder. And when he told me that for myself, then I knew I could help them because they would be like, well, why would God let this happen to children? That's what everybody wants to know. Why would God allow children to be hurt like this? Yeah. And he said to me, I came for all of them every time before they were injured or hurt. Their spirit was intact. It was never damaged. And neither were you. Mm. the real you was never damaged. And when he told me that I was like, Oh God, that is so fantastical. You've got to give me a confirmation. You've got to give me another proof because I can't tell these people, this is too dangerous. You got to tell me the proof that night I went to sleep <clears throat> And at about 5 a.m., I was hearing a song. My spirit was singing a song. And it was the, the song by Coldplay called Paradise. Oh, yeah. When she was just a girl, she expected the world. So she, but she, but it flew away from her reach. So she ran away in her sleep. And dreamed of para, para, paradise. She expected the world, but it was taken from her. It flew away from mm. her reach. So she dreamed. It says um, she dreamed of paradise, but she didn't really. She really went there. Mm. She actually went there because she's a spirit being that can has no boundaries. You can go. Right. So from day one, I learned to go there. And that's why I'm alive today. I would not be alive today. And many more times I almost died. But because he was my sustenance, he was my everything, then I was able to continue to live on the earth. And many more painful things would come. Many more like if you knew my life, it could be a horror movie, a thriller, and a, and a comedy all in one. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to name some points. Uh, you know, the first thing I did was marry an abusive man because he was, um, he, he was like stable. 
you know, and I needed stability. So I married him for the things that I was looking for, knowing that I was warned by God not to do it. Mm. But I did it anyway, because I was alone and I wanted a home. I wanted to belong somewhere. And from day one, even on the honeymoon, it was horrifying, absolutely horrifying. And he put me into a prison. Like the parameters were so tight in my little box that there wasn't even enough oxygen to survive. And I almost didn't survive. So then, you know, my followers know I was bedridden five months twice. And, um, you know, any everything hurt, even whispering hurt. And so finally, God uh, rescued me out of there. He tried to get me out so many times. And because of religion, religious indoctrination, I stayed. That's the mm -hmm. only reason. And finally, God had to almost kick me out. He sent three different prophets to tell me, you must get out now. It's either divorce or death. And so I finally did it. And my body began to pour out poison that had been stuck from trauma. And um, I was so happy I never looked back. I, I'm so happy that I, I finally escaped. But he wanted me out of there before I ever got in there, right? He never wanted it. And so then, I, you know, five years later, I run straight into the arms of another problem. And I, I married him for different reasons. You know, he had things that I was still looking for and i did not know that you know, he had been uh clean from drugs for two and a half years and i did not know that that wasn't long enough <laughs> you know mm -hmm. if the lies is, that's embedded into his cellular memory that caused the drugs is still there you can yeah. dry out as much as you want but you're not going to be safe uh, you know from going back and so he ended up, he came into the relationship with a, a broken down truck and that's it. And then I had this house, you know, this was a cabin in the national forest and um, everything else, you know, that I, he married into what he was looking for was the glam of the road, you know, the, the travel, the, the uh, attention, he craved attention. And I had, I was kind of well known uh, all over the world. I was traveling all over uh, the world and he wanted that. He ended up ruining me and he took over my concerts where uh, he would tell the sound man not to listen to me. So I could not hear the pianist. She couldn't hear me and I was shut down without playing a note. And they had, they had booked me to do a healing concert and I couldn't even do anything. So he would take over every time. So finally I was in such shock. I, I didn't know what to do. So I just said, I can't do it anymore. I'm not going to be on the road anymore. That made him so angry that he could not get that attention that he went into drugs. And so in the end, I lost everything through his drugs. He sold everything. And, um, I ended up, you know, having a nervous breakdown. Uh, my health was almost Addison's disease, which is adrenal failure. Couldn't work, couldn't do anything. And I couldn't even speak. So if I tried to speak, because I was trying to make sense out of the whole thing, because everyone around him blamed me. And, and he was a con artist. So everyone he talked to, they blamed me. And I'm like, like a woman who's been raped gets blamed for being raped, you know, and then you're like, but, and I would just go, I, 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 and I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. I could not talk. And so, um, I cried so much so often that I, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't get my air mm -hmm. and I would be afraid. And then when God would say, come on, look around, what are you thankful for? And I would start counting my blessings. And the more I did, the more I could breathe. And that was my anesthesia during those days. Mm. But at that time when it was in process and I was in, I couldn't figure it out. I, I, it was so horrendous what was happening because not only was all of that going on, but we were running like a produce company that was like a ministry. 
and little kids would come off the bus and come in and tell us they were being abused at home. And, and I was helping people and I was loving on people and people would come in. I had a little gift shop and it was all really pretty. And my music was playing in there and they'd come in and they would just say, can I just sit in here during my break? I'd say, yeah. And they'd be in there crying, you know, and I mm-hmm. love, I love these people. And, um, then I found out we the customer stopped coming and I could not figure it out. Come to find out he was running a meth lab at night. Oh, you know, no. You know? <laughs> and um, it, it, it just crashed, all crashed down. I lost everything. And during that time, trying to figure out what is going on, and I, I would go take my car into a parking lot late at night because I needed to let out the pain. I would scream at the top of my lungs. And I said to God, you need to take me home now. Mm. I will not go on. I cannot go on. This is too much for me. Take me now. I demand mm. you take me. Mm. And I prepared myself. I just waited to go. And I felt myself going up. And then I felt him gently push me back down. I said, why? Why won't you take me? What am I doing here? Why do I have to be here? I hate it. I hate my life. This Mm -hmm. is what prepared me for this day. I didn't know. And he kept speaking. Everywhere I went all over the world, they say, it's bigger than you know. What's coming for you? is way bigger than you could ever imagine. And one day he said, and people kept saying, you're a Joseph. You're a Joseph. You're going to save many people's lives. <laughs> one day, you need to stop spiritualizing this Joseph thing because it's literal. A time is coming of great upheaval in the world. And I'm going to use you like I did Shirley Temple to bring hope and comfort to the hearts of the people. And then, you know, a few years later, here comes a a movie producer's wife came up to me and said, God told me he's going to, there's a time coming of great upheaval in America and he's going to use you like he did Shirley Temple, word for word what he had said to me. And I never knew what was going to happen or when it would happen. But a year ago, I started to realize I think it's time. I think it's time for me to come out because the people need me. They need what I can offer because I've been trained and prepared like a spec ops my whole life for this very moment right now. Pardon me, your your internet cut out a bit. And um, I'm wondering, did you say a year ago that happened? A year ago, I began to feel that it was my time to come out because I was in seclusion for about 14 years after horrible trauma on the road. What these people did to me in other countries was absolutely unbelievable. Um, It's unthinkable what they did to me. And uh, I I was just so done, so done. And it's like um, my kindness was mistaken for weakness. Mm -hmm. And so they, they felt that I was vulnerable and they could take from me. They could hurt me. They destroyed me. They destroyed my reputation. They shut down my whole tour in certain countries. And um, it was like, why? Why am I such a target? Everywhere I went, it was like I was marked to be attacked and to be betrayed over and over again. And so... Um, finally, I, I studied a, a therapy called emotional release. And mm-hmm. I, I found out that I had magnets, lies that were like magnets within me that were causing me to draw a lot of that to myself. It's like my, your expectation will draw it to you. If you are in poverty, why are you in poverty? When God has prepared everything that you could ever need in advance, he already said yes, you don't even have to ask him. But we, we are in poverty because we expect it and because of all the lies that have been set up. And I mentioned on one of my treks about 
however your father was, you will transfer that belief system onto God and believe that he's stingy or he doesn't like you, you're not good enough, or all those different things. It's not his fault. It's not the government's fault. You are not at the mercy of anyone, not anyone. You can ascend to, to receive whatever it is that you believe. And so my life began to change lie by lie. As I pulled it out, literally, it was like my peripheral vision got bigger every single time. Light came into that area where the lie was yes. embedded into me. And when I pulled it out, then light went into that area. And I began to see clearer about life, about everything. And, and these this like. Uh, phrases of wisdom, I would be doing dishes and these, this wisdom would come into my mind. I'd go oh, like, wow, like revelation, knowledge coming to me, every lie I pulled. And so to me, it was an adventure to pull lies. It wasn't like, oh, great, another lie, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> this cedar fever thing, I've already, I've already addressed the lie, but I think I need to still, um, um, develop it a little bit more to, to find out more truth. So the more truth I find, the more this will completely disappear. All right. Just like I just healed my leg by, see, God already healed it. He healed everything, every disease we have. It's, he already did it. It's done. He paid the highest price he could ever pay. There's nothing more he can do. We have to find the way we have to find the truth that sets us free from the situation. And it, it took me a little while this time because sometimes they're complicated and uh, you think it's this, but nope, it wasn't that. So what is the root? And then I finally found it after two years of pain in my leg from falling. Mm. It's gone. It's just gone. Cause I pulled the lie and it's just still such a miracle to me that I don't have to pick up my leg and put it in the car. <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry about how I sit at the at the table because it's not going to hurt anymore. I used to have to prepare everything I did. I had to prepare for the leg. You know, it's gone. So, Hallelujah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. So, um, you know, so many times God gets blamed for things. I think the cabal actually taught us that because they would say that the the Tragedies that happen in nature were an act of God. They never were. They never were. It was all of them. Every time. He did not want that. He did not cause that. And so the same with our lives. He does not cause the stuff that happens to us. He doesn't want it, but then he can still use it. And that's what he did with me. So every time I found my way out of the wilderness of that situation, I also taught it to a group of people that were following me, not knowing that I was storing up provision for you, for my followers, for the patriots. So I can take out of my medic medical bag, the things that saved me from the situation I was through. And I, I've already taught it and, and then it's ready to be able to help other people at this time. I could have never imagined this day, you know, how it has played out. All right. So, um, and so he, you know, for my whole life, um, I've been following him, uh, listening for his voice, studying the code book. So the Bible is actually a code book and a collection of love letters. The cabal knew that, so they went and took 711 books out, which were the roadmap to um, us being able to do to be to act like our father, because we're the offspring of God, and we we have no, there are no impossibilities, we have no limitations whatsoever. But they did not want us to know that, so they took those books out. Plus, they kind of messed with the rest of it. However, it's still intact as a roadmap to find what I found. And that is, I believe I can do anything. I don't believe in aging. 
I don't believe because aging is degrees of death. They taught us that we were going to get old and die, but look what's coming. We don't okay. have to. We do not have to. Okay. All right. So I don't, I just don't believe in death at all. He conquered death. And so um, it's all in our mind. And there, there's no such thing as death, period. All right. So um, Well, I don't want to interrupt the flow of your story. However, I do want to say while you're um, taking a look at uh, what people are saying in the chat, thank you everyone yeah. for voicing uh, questions and comments in chat. I think that's what's so beautiful about you is that we have parallel stories. I had pneumonia when I was less than two. Oh. It, <laughs> it changed the bones in my ear. So I'm deaf in my left ear. Oh. I had a mother who had a tumultuous, abusive childhood who ran away at 15 and got married. And I, I felt I felt neglected as well. And I mean, there's so so and, and people are relating to your story there. They they love it because I think that once we shine a light on our own truth and share that story and have witness yeah. to it, then it, it inspires other people had to have the courage to take that step and tell their story as well. So thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. And, you know, that's why people follow us, me, me is because they relate to me. So I look at myself as one who's come back from the dead almost you know i i was resurrected in order to come back and help people and so um i would like to read to you psalm 18 because he used with me to help me understand how he felt about the trauma i went through i want to bring hope without making light of your suffering I want to validate your suffering, but I just also want to show you a way out of it. There is a way that you can get out of it. And um, so um, I want to go ahead and read that right now. And, you know, the thing is, I like to call God Yahweh because um, every most people have seen the video recently that's been on um, social media about how every single one of your cells contains the the stamp, the name of Yahweh. Mm. All right, no, I, so. I I don't think I've seen that video. Are you? Uh... But Can Shelly drop it in the uh, chat? Well, that would I'm be lovely. I'm not sure that she has it, but um, oh, okay. let me. One thing I wanted to say, um, I found a meme that said, when you are born in a world you don't fit in, it's because you were born to help create a new one. Yeah, yeah. I like that so, one. I saw yeah. that post. So that. Oh, I know it's in my emails. And if you uh, would like, Allison can post it in the links after okay. the show as well. Yeah, let me uh, get it. Shall we look in the emails? And you'll see I sent something last night about the DNA. If you look under DNA in the emails, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you found it. Mm -hmm. You want to put it on the screen? Um, Are you able? Save it and there it is. Okay, I'm going to get it up. God's signature is on every cell of the human body. Um, a nucleic uh, acid bind the helixes together by sulfuric bridges in the sequence of A, T, Z, G. All right, and those that stands for the numbers 10, 5, 6, 5, and that is uh, Yahweh without the vowels. Every single cell of the body, it's encoded with God's name. 
they didn't want us to know that. Did you right. I'm saying okay, she great. So she can okay. All right. So, mm -hmm. you know, people have been so turned off by religion, and they don't even like the word salvation as if we need a savior. But the thing is, they have not done their research and understood that the word salvation means body, soul, spirit, wholeness. That's what he came to do. That's beautiful. Yeah, wholeness. Mm. He provided for it in advance of the cabal. So even though the cabal was in control of our earth, we could find a way out of it. We could escape the matrix. And I learned how to do it. And so that's what a lot of my teachings that I want to share with you will help you do. Because uh, you have the answer to everything you need right now because he is the great I am, which means I am everything yeah. you need. I am it. He doesn't have it. He is it. Omnipotent and omnipresent. So go. when did you actually discover that you were living in a matrix? You know, um, when I escaped my uh, first abusive husband, I was on tour in Utah, not, not Utah, uh, Iowa. And um, I was staying with in the home of some very spiritual people. And they said to me, have you ever watched The Matrix? And I said, no. And they said, would you like to? We, we can narrate it for you because it's a true story. I said, sure. They narrated it for me. And it was phenomenal the way they were showing the truth about our lives, about how you know, this world is, is not real and that we can download anything we need out of the real world. Cause that's where we belong. That's where we came from, but our minds, we need to free our minds from the, the thinking, the earthly thinking, the Bible calls it carnal mind. And that's not sinful mind as much as it is earthly mind, human reasoning that will stop you every time imagination holy imagination is what transcends you into the fifth dimension so i i believe for me the fifth dimension is just entering into the spirit realm of the real world where anything is possible everything is there in that world and i feel it's just a treasure hunt an adventure to go find what I need that's already there. So we don't we don't have to be victims. That's here. That's what we were trained to be. We don't have to be that. That's why I'm so concerned that when the government, the Trump team resets the whole world on every level, if we don't reset this, yeah. there will be no change. Whatever we believe will still happen to us, even though we get a pile of money and we get, you know, taken care of for a time, is we can't be thinking that's that's all I want is to be relieved. I want relief at all costs. It's like selling your soul short. Don't sell yourself short. And this is what God spoke to me is that He made human beings, or I don't really even believe we're human. We're not just human. We are superhuman. We are the offspring of God. He made us because he desired us. He wanted a relationship and he showed that in the garden of Eden. So he came into the garden and, and it was a perfect place. And he walked and talked with Abraham and they created together. Let's name this, this, and this, this. And they had a wonderful relationship until man decided that they wanted to go with human reasoning instead of this wonderland. And God has been trying to get us back to the garden ever since. He's going, I don't want that for you. Yes, I want freedom. It's all about love, freedom, and joy. It even says that in the code book, Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom. That's the whole point that I set you free because I want you to be free. I don't want you to be entangled in a yoke of bondage or, you know, a religious bondage. The cabal made sure that the religious 
indoctrination occurred because we would buy it so much easier. Okay, that was never his plan. He hates religion. When Jesus was on the earth, the only people he reprimanded were the religious. All right, he was looking to set people free from it so that they could become in their minds the offspring of God so they could operate in the realm of in the impossible where anything is possible. He said, let there be light. And we can say, let there be something. And it will happen because we believe it. It's all in what you believe. And so, um, you know, he, he he's coming for you. And, and I was going to read, um, I got sidetracked. He said, he, I was in prayer and I felt him come into me like someone having a contraction in labor. And he was going, come, come back to me. Come back to my heart. I want you. I want you in me and me in you. And we co-create and we fly. We do the impossible together. We play. We, it's freedom. It's, it's a dance of life. And I heard him say, I would move heaven and earth for you, which I am doing right now, because you mean everything to me. I'm banking everything my whole life, and it's ancient. I have been waiting ancient days to have you back. That's all that matters to me is you. We have been the prize in between good and evil. The cabal wanted us as slaves and God wanted us as lovers. The lover of your soul desires you. He wants you to come home to him. And I always think of that movie someplace, somewhere in time, I believe it is. And Christopher Reeve, you know, met Jane Seymour and they had a relationship. And then he came back into, you know, the current time instead of the real world. And he had to die to the old system to go into the new, the real world. And that's what the Matrix movie shows. You get unplugged from the system. and But when we get unplugged from the system, we cry out like, oh, no, they stopped my this or that. Oh, my rent. Oh, this and that. But the thing is, it's then when that happens, you have you're hemmed in on every side. This is what happened to me my whole life. Hemmed in on every side, no place to go, nowhere to get help, nowhere but up. So I would bury myself into him and then I would ascend and then I would find the answer or it would just come to me because I went in instead of looking in the matrix. He wants to get us unhooked and um, unaddicted to the matrix, the earthly system. And the white hats are very concerned that we are not changing this. And if we don't, it can happen again. And so in our need, in our desperation, I want to bail everybody out, as I always say, but Will I be like an enabling mother and then they don't find the door like I did? You've got to find your own door. And even in the matrix, they say, I can show you the door, but you're the one that has to walk through it. I'm trying to free your mind from the way you've lived, from the way you've operated to a new way to live. And I say, if you picture him carrying you over the threshold, you will have everything you need because he is it. You trust him. You just say, okay, I just surrender my whole life to you because I know that you love me and you have the best plans for me. He didn't come to take. He came to give. The way the, the religious people have displayed it as you got to give up this, you got to do that. And, and I always say the language of the kingdom does not contain words like must, should, have to. All of those words are earthly bondages. The real world is a world where you become as a little child. 
You don't have all kinds of constraints. You have freedom to play and to dream unhindered. So Psalm 18, I love you, Yahweh, and I am bonded to you. You are my strength. You are the bedrock beneath my feet. So we don't have to shift. When the world is shifting all around us, you don't have to if you are standing on the rock. My deliverer, my God, my rock, my rescue, where no one, not the cabal, not the the landlord can reach me. You are the shield around me, the mighty power that saves me in my high place. All I need to do is call on you, Yahweh, the praiseworthy God. When I do, I'm safe and sound in you, delivered from my foes, from poverty, from its sickness. For when the cords of death wrapped around me and the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me, taking me to death's door, in my distress, I cried out to you, the delivering God. And from your temple, which is right here, it's not up there, it's right here. You heard my troubled cry and my sobs went right to your heart. The earth itself shivered and shook. It reeled and rocked before you. This is how he feels about what the cabal has done to us. We are not vic their victims. We're not. But this is how he felt about it. The mountains trembled. They melted away, for his anger was kindled on your behalf. Fierce flames leapt out of his mouth, erupting with blazing, burning coals like smoke and fire. He stretched heaven's curtain open and came to your defense. This is what is happening right now. And Trump says so. The white hats are working with the angelic host of heaven. He rode a chariot of thunderclouds amidst thick darkness. And his steed was a cherub, soaring on outstretched wings of spirit wind. Wrapped in the thick darkness of a cloud, his thundering uh, tabernacle surrounded him and he hid himself in a mystery of darkness. Why? So he could come down stealth, warrior, on your behalf. And suddenly the brilliance of his presence broke through with lightning bolts and hail, a tempest dropping coals of fire. The Lord thundered, the great God above every God spoke with his thundering voice from the sky. Almost like, how dare you touch my daughter, my son? How dare you rob from them? And he is coming to avenge us right now. This is the day of vengeance. Then with a mighty roar, he laid bare the foundations of the earth. He uncovered the secret source of the sea. The hidden depths of land and sea were exposed by the blast of his hot breath. And he rescued you from many waters and drew you to himself like a lamb. Even though you were helpless in his hands, or helpless in the hands of the enemy, you were delivered. When I was at my weakest, my enemies attacked, but the Lord held on to me. You are not, you don't have to worry about your rescue. He's got a hold of you. Love, his love broke open the way and he brought me into a beautiful place. He rescued me because his delight was in me. You are the revelation light in my darkness and in your brightness. I can see the path ahead. You see, that's how you find the way out of your situation. In his presence, the light of his, the brilliance of his presence causes you to see the path ahead. That's beautiful. People are really resonating with your what your with the words coming out of your beautiful mouth. Oh, thank you. So, you know, I can't stand to see people suffer. I want to deliver them. I want to help them in every way I possibly can. And we are helping a lot of people right now. Um, but it's it feels like it falls short. But the, the thing that I need to remember 
is that pain is not all bad. Pain is the fuel that propels you into your highest destiny. You can use it. God uses it. He will so, use it to, and he will flip it to your highest good. But we keep seeing because of the, our painful past, how our past went due to the lies we believed, we project that onto our future and believe that it could end bad. It could end bad. So we have to stop that projection. You're projecting that into your future and begin to see it with your eyes of your spirit. You visualize it, the truth that he promised for you. It's real. It's That's the real world. And it seems like child's play because that's how you get into the kingdom is by holy imagination. You see the resolve that you need. Instead of begging for it, you see it and you expect it and it comes to you. That's a law, a spiritual law. It will come to you. Absolutely, 100%. So the thing is, we were handpicked. We were first choice, his first choice choice to live at this time in history it was a vip invitation to live at this time is it painful yes it is but that pain is going to expose our su superhuman powers that's how we get get back and get a hold of those because we have to get out of the matrix and so when i lost everything and i had a nervous breakdown I had no job. I had no income, no home, no car. I was unplugged from the system. Uh, there was nothing, you know, that I could lean on. And I saw a vision of myself going through the birth canal, like being thrust through the birth canal. And it was not a pleasant experience. It was painful. But I, I was, it was just like Neo going through that, that, um, that tunnel or whatever that was in a slide. He slid out after he got unplugged into the new world and he had to be rebuilt. His muscles had atrophied and his eyes hurt because he never used them in the real world. And so that's what I had to do. I had to be retrained how to be, how to be, how to be who I was created to be all along. They yeah. pulled the wool over our eyes. They lied to us about who we were, but they lied about him too. And he's furious about it. And so he wants us back. It is an actual privilege and an honor to be invited and handpicked to be at this time in history and to be focused on our pain will cause us to miss the door where the provision is. We have to get beyond the pain, the focus of the pain, and look up. Pain is the exit door. It's actually the exit out of the matrix. Because there's nowhere to go but up. We're all, and I hear these stories every day, people are hemmed in. They have no way out. And it's terrifying. There's no way out of my pain. I'm going to be evicted, blah, blah, blah. But there is a way out if you go the right direction. If you go up, you will find the door and you will get out. Losing everything was the best thing that ever happened to me because it thrust me into the real world where I was no longer leaning on the cabal system. And it's amazing how quickly it happens for those who are suffering, making that shift through conscious prayer, meditation, and intention, focused intention. And then they're surprised. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe what happened after I did that exercise. And I'm like, of course it happened. This is the new shift as we practice being co-creators, metaphysicians who look at the problem and immediately turn to the solution, which is spirit. I love your, uh, yes, you're so Yeah. And so then it becomes... Of course it happened. That's It used to be, oh my gosh, I can't believe it happened. And then, of course it happened. 
You yeah. connected, you aligned. And now it's been given to you in the most un, unseeable way with our eyes. Yeah. The, the divine is blessing us all the time once we make that shift. And there are people who are asking other questions around that, but I'll let you keep going. Well, I'm pretty well done. I just wanted people to see the passionate invitation from the creator of the universe that he wants you back. I heard him. I felt him wailing and calling your name like, come back to me. Come back to me. They lied about me. Don't believe what they said. I am not a religious God. I am a God of freedom and passion. And I want to walk with you in this new world. But like I said, if we focus on the RV only, because I want relief, so I'm focused on the RV, and then I'm constantly disappointed because it's so slow, we'll miss the door. But if we just kind of like forget that, let that go for a while and go this way, we get to taste the RV before it gets here. That's what's happened to me. I don't wait for anything. I don't wait for the med bed. He is the original med bed. And you're created in his image, so you are a walking med bed. And to think we have to wait for something external is to miss the most incredible part of this whole reset. So we have to reset this and just say, God, I don't know how to do what she's talking about, but show me. And you ask him and say, okay, I need this. I need rent. I can't find anybody to help me. How do I get it? I'm going to ask you and I'm going to look for it. And I'm going to expect it. You call it in. You call it in. Thank you, God. Thank you that I'm going to have it. I will not be evicted. Start changing this. This is how you create. You could have an answer coming and you cancel it by this. Your words are powerful because they are life or death at all times. I believe that this group is going to make it. All those listening right now, my followers, I remember when God was trying to get me to hold on and not die, not ask to be taken out. And he said, I know it's hard what you're going through, but you're being trained to save many people. And he said, will you do it for me? And I said, okay, okay, I'll do it for you. And he goes, but wait till you see them. Wait till you see them. They're so beautiful. You're going to fall in love with them. And then when someone threw me out there <laughs> into viral land, and I got a, one look at you. I was in, in tears and I go, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know you were so beautiful. And I'm not just trying to placate. I'm not trying to say, you know, words that you'll be happy with. No, I'm telling you this is real because I traveled all over the world. I never felt this before. I never saw this before. I never saw people like this before. Never. And he wanted me to understand the type of people, people, the caliber of people that you are. You are heroes right now. Yes, you will be when your family finally finds out <laughs> the truth about you. You're going to really know you. She was right. I am a hero, but you're, hero, you're a hero right now. And I just have to say, when I was praying today and thinking about you i tears they every time i think about you tears come down my face because you are so magnificent mm -hmm. you are captain marvel and the light is actually beaming out through all your holes right now and you don't know it you look down and you see the dust in the um of the journey the pain the blood and the tears but you can't see what i see <laughs> And I see, it's almost, and I was trying to find words for it. It's like, as a group in this age, in this 
what we've been through. This is phenomenal. What we've it been is. Yeah, there it is. Corporate suffering, corporate processing, even the point that Q mm. acts like operates like the Bible. The Bible is a code book. And if we we get used to decoding Q, then we can go back now and find out that the Bible is alive. Yeah. It's phenomenal. And it has code within it. That's what I love about it. You know, is I have found the roadmap for getting out of the matrix in the code book, just like Q. And so he was teaching us through Q. Right. Love it. And so this group of people that you are, it's like one body in, in my understanding. It's like because you have unified around a common goal, a common understanding, a common truth, and you become one mighty, glorious army of heroes. Yeah. So not Absolutely. just survivors. You're not just going to make it to the end. I just want to make it to the end and get to the bank and get to the, you know, the med bed. No, don't sell yourself short, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> All your scars are the stripes of a general. And that is a fact. Absolutely. It doesn't matter how many times you've cried or gotten angry. That doesn't matter. You're still here. And that is the proof that you made it, that you are magnificent. And you've accepted the calling to be one of the chosen ones, because once we do have our blessing, um, everyone will be able to begin preparing for the next assignment that you're given. Yeah. And that's what you're doing, Tressie. You're helping to prepare people to not only enjoy the blessing yet to find out the next assignment, right? We've all been here learning and studying for the past years and more people are just coming on and listening and, and trying to figure out what we're talking about. And there are others who are ready to receive the next assignment. And I think that's coming along with um, with the RV, I, I just heard or read that we're going to have a one year um, golden initiation. And I was feeling that that's what everyone needs. Who's leading us in this? Uh, well, spirit is. And yet there are earthly things that we need to be able to manage and prepare for because it, our earth isn't as we were taught it was. And there's so much exploration that's going to begin. And we're going to be part of that frontier that goes exploring. Yeah, I will say uh, I'll give you a little update. And that is that it is still this month. Uh, a lot of things are moving forward right now. I have to be careful, but I'll just say there was a very, very big, important meeting this week. That's all I can say about it. But just know that it is this month. And those people who are saying February, late February, March, I don't believe that. I don't believe that we can last that long um, because people haven't transcended their minds yet and they uh they think that they can't make it without the rv and the med bed you know i can do my best and others can do their best but there's throngs of people that are still in their victim mentality and they know it they know they have to hurry and so they are they're not going to prolong this thing and every time i talk to my advisor they are listening and i i fight for you every time. <laughs> I say, <laughs> you need to hear me right now. The people are, are not faring very well. They're in way too mm. much trauma, too much pain. And um, there's a lot of anger. And I, you know, that's another thing. I just don't understand why my followers are not angry. <laughs> I just, they're so beautiful. And uh, we're going to start doing, um, a trek trek tribal tribe person what are we going to call it uh, per week you know or per trek you pick somebody out and bless your socks off because you are um like in our tribe 
our house, our house on Facebook, <laughs> you are encouraging the rest of the tr tribal members yeah. on a regular basis. And we are like, wow, you're so beautiful. And so, um, Man, we just got a we got a clean house over there on Facebook. You know, it, everybody is full of love and helping one another. And when somebody says, "I'm I need prayer, I need help," it, it's like all these beautiful trekkers are all over it. We got you, honey. We got you. And oh man, that makes me so happy. <laughs> and it's so beautiful because that's your. This is your ministry, and this is uh, people who are attracted to your 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 word and your experience strength and hope and that's what we that's why we need to commune with other like-minded people who yeah. are showing you how we can overcome the current situation and circumstances by ascending our mind our thoughts our emotions and and do the healing work and so then we have people who have already like you like me who've been doing that inner healing journey for decades now and yet at the same time i lost my audience when i came out in january 2021 to say that <laughs> Well, this is a movie. Joe Biden's not president. And, and, you know, and Elon Musk is a white hat. And and that just blew all of my I'm talking friendships from childhood. All right. And women in our community of healers just thought I was wackadoodle. And I and I don't know where they are all at right now. And it doesn't matter because, you know, in, in doing the Doctor of Divinity studies, the question, the last paper to write, and the last question was, do you believe there will be a time on earth when everyone believes in God? How would you answer that? Well, I think they will, because it's going to be obvious after the 10 days of disclosure, there will be no more debates about the what's real, what's true anymore, because even the the perpetrators, the black hats, they, they're, we all have all their videotaped confessions and they're going to be seen for what they were. And they did not have any remorse. They were just evil personified. And so there will be no one who can say that Joey Babes was a good guy. <laughs> well, yeah, we knew that. We knew that a couple decades ago, right? Like, yeah. But the same with the truth about everything, the truth yeah. about God, which I just detailed this passionate lover of our souls. That's what he is. The cabal lied about him and he's not happy about it. He's like uh, he's working with President Trump. He sent Trump like a type of Moses but he, he picked him because he knew he would be a bull in the China shop and that China needed to be broken. <laughs> yeah. And he was the perfect bait as he has been described as he's the bait to bring all the rats to the surface so they can start slinging at him. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're cleaning up the rats in the background. It's such a beautiful story. It is. It is phenomenal and it's yeah. truly miraculous and i you know i too ha am intuitive and have dreams that turn into reality afterwards occasionally not all the time and this body of light vibrates with energy and passion and i i wanted to ask you we're going to go to some questions pretty soon so I, I'm curious about one thing. When did you actually become a podcaster, turn on your microphone and start video? Was that in the last year? No. Um, I started a class for superheroes. I wanted to teach people how to fly. I love it. <laughs> and so that started, I think, in like 2017 or 18. Uh, probably 17, maybe even before that. And so we had a, a really beautiful group that was like a family. And, um, and then uh, it developed into the trek on Facebook in time. And that was just, you know, I, then I went on the road because I had a dream that God told me to get out of California. And I'm not saying you know, that Californians should leave 
you you should not leave because you're about to burst forth into the most magnificent California that you've always dreamed of, that you were always supposed to be. And that is about to happen. And you got a bad rap. I'm, I'm all of a sudden going off tangent here, but California, you're going to shine again. There's gold in your eyes. There's gold in your, your hearts. And mm -hmm. it's not fair what the world has done to you and blamed you for it. It was never your fault. It was your government and you were kept in bondage all this time. And so now, and even on behalf, behalf of the Texans, mm. Texans, haven't we judged California? And it wasn't their fault. We have to, we have to shake hands. We have to become partners in this because they're they're overthrowing their government, and they have overthrown their government already. It's just not public yet. And um, so anyway, as mm -hmm. I, I loved California when I was there and God said, get out, you have to do it. And you have to do it now. And I said, and he gave me the vision of Red Dawn. And I said, no, I want to stay and fight. I want to fight. And he said, the medic does not serve on the front lines. Mm -hmm. And then after I got to Texas, the home of the free, the land, the land of the free, the home of the brave, I always get that wrong. I was in such a womb of protection. I did not suffer like the rest of the world, but that was because so I could be strong to help the rest of the world. That was his reasoning. And I was so glad I was here. It was so perfect. So I, I did work really hard. I damaged my health trying to help people, but mm. I would not have been able to do that if I had gone through what everybody else went through with all the subjugation, the masks and the whole bit. Yeah. You know, so anyway, um, once uh, God told me to get out, I didn't know where I was going. I I knew after a time that I was supposed to come to Texas, but I didn't know where uh, I had set my sights on Bernie, Texas. So it was Bernie or bust. <laughs> and, <laughs> but I'm just going to my my rent uh, was out. You know, it was time to go. I was terminated. I needed to go. And so. I thought, well, I'm just going to travel up the coast of California and say the long goodbye and then go up into Oregon and um, see my parents and teach all the way up the journey in people's homes and then come back down when it was time and teach in homes and then make my way over to Texas. And that's what I did at five and a half months on the road. And I was on the trek every single night and they were helping to sustain me during that time and some wild, wild things happened. So mm. it was a wild trek, a wild ride to get here. Oh, my goodness. Well, I was raised in San Diego, all over Southern California. I went to 11 elementary schools, three junior highs, and two high schools. One was in Hawaii. So moving was a constant. And when I came to Washington, I noticed they had an attitude about Californians. And being a Californian, I saw that we actually had a, a little lapse. The Washingtonians were just getting into disco and we were just leaving disco. I mean, it was really interesting, the the difference. And yet now a lot of Washingtonians who are awake want to move out to Idaho or Montana and, and get out of Washington. However, from what you're saying and what we're hearing, everything's about to change. And we know that like our governor was taken care of a long time ago and um, so the big reveal is going to be such a blessing. And that's when we're all needed. You're all needed to help with com being compassionate and empathetic to the people who didn't believe you, called you crazy and um, have avoided you or you avoided them because it's pretty challenging to have a conversation with somebody who's completely asleep. What do you talk about? Because right. we're so passionate and excited. Oh my gosh, the blessings are coming and you're going to be in, you know, what we say is I am an excellent receiver. And when we say that now, then we're preparing our body mind ah. to be in that vibration. When we close our eyes and say that, I am a powerful and prosperous creator, and I am open. I'm a grateful receiver, and it's reciprocal. The more that you're given, whether it's wisdom or um, whatever means to help provide for the roof over your head, food, financial, whatever, it comes in different forms for everyone. And so being grateful in the now, every day, like I start off with my candle of gratitude, gratitude 
first to God, to whatever name that you choose to call, you say Yahweh. These are these are vibrational matches and communicating with spirit. And that does not go unheard. It's the whining and the negativity and the struggle. By repeating that, you said, you know, we're not here to be victims. And I co-created, I made the decision to create the You Are a Powerful Woman's Retreat because people in recovery weren't growing spiritually and were stuck in being a victim. I'm an addict. They would affirm that over and over again. Oh, and yeah. when I came into recovery at 27 from uh, cocaine and drug abuse and alcohol, you know, all of that, I shifted that word as soon as I started my spiritual studies and practice. I am a grateful recovering alcoholic. And now I don't even have that in my consciousness anymore. I am a perfect child of God, the creator. And I have been blessed to know that my past with my family or my relationship with my husband, whatever, that's in the past. And if I keep dragging those suitcases into the now, I'm going to keep getting more of that. And so that's why I think we are so inspired to continue the education process of becoming our own mind mastery, eliminating and blessing and releasing the mind frick that keeps us in bondage of slavery, of victim and illness. And so thank you, Tressie. You're welcome. Thank you. Are you ready for some questions? I am. Okay. So I don't know if it's going to be Shelly reading them or Allison or if they're going to tag team and take turns, but let's go for it. Oh, okay. Um, Allison can do it. Allison? Yeah. Okay. I was putting them all in the in the private chat for you, but I will pull them up because there's so many. Um, let's see. The first one here I have. I get down to the first one. My apologies. I was caught off guard. Okay. Um, first question. Could you share your wisdom to lead us in the ascension process um we did we do one of those live on and that's, rubble and that's what people are asking is there a way to direct them to that because you're getting a lot of people like the question here is there a way to help us escape the matrix they want it so badly, they're not sure how to get it. So there's a lot of questions that we could address with one answer by well directing them. Yeah, to the Rumble video or the Facebook video, okay. Escape, from the, Escape from the Matrix. And if you want to look for that and give them the link, then yeah. they can go to that. Okay. Another way is to pull the lies. And we had the uh, two-part video on Rumble and Facebook yeah. Uh, preparation for the live pulling party and then the live pulling party. So okay. you'll only be able to escape a certain situation by pulling the lie that's blocking your view. So the lie blinds you from the truth and it makes you deaf to the, to hearing God's voice speaking the truth that sets you free. So it's that adventure of pulling the lie and then waiting for the, the answer, the truth. And then, yeah, so that was the lie pulling party. I gave step-by-step -step instructions and I also have a self-help um, recording that you can get off our website called Condensed Emotional Cleansing, where we give you all the tools and the step-by-step -step to pull your own lies. And then every roadblock that you have, let's say financial, you can pull the lie that is keeping you from the wealth. All right. So like I have told my, my people that follow me when just before I pulled the lie for finances, I was borrowing toilet paper from my parents. <laughs> I, and I was like, why, 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 you know, and he's going, because you have a bag with a hole in it. I can't bless you because it falls through because you give the ship away all the time. It was me that was holding it back, not him. So then when he helped me to see, 
to go back and pull the lie, the lie ended up being, I don't count. So if I don't count, how can I draw blessing? I don't count. I have to give it away because they count more than me. I found out that was a lie. So once that was that was healed and changed and I got my truth, I count just as much as anybody else. And I'm not going to give the ship away anymore. I care about people, but I I have to put my my provision for myself first or I'm not going to have enough to go around to help anybody. See, that's the lie. It, the lie wants you to be destitute so you can't help anybody. <laughs> so the more you take care of yourself and self-nurture, the more you can help other people. So I really work at self-nurture now. So I went from self-hatred to self-nurture. And so I have a list of things that are my happy places. All right. One, as you know, is thrift store shopping. <laughs> so I designed my whole house around thrift store items, one of a kind pieces, and my wardrobe, you know, it comes from a thrift shop. <laughs> and then wine, you know, I just think wine is so emotional and so beautiful. And I'm I don't overindulge, but it's such a beautiful experience because of the crushing of the grape and the oil that comes that is so healing for you. The, and that's like our lives, you know. And then um, art and music and those kinds of things I make sure in fine dining. You know, I make sure I go and have fine dining once or twice a month, even if you have to just get a bowl of soup. You don't have to spend a lot. But you need the experience of being served like a VIP because we, most of us, especially women, have served everyone and we have never been served. We have never been nurtured. So you got to do it yourself. You take good care of yourself. Once I learned all of those principles, money came. You know, big donations, as is some of you have heard my story. $50,000 at the knock at the door, FedEx. You know, and then six months later, 100000 And that caused me to um, recover the loss of all things. And then I could go forward. I could go to school. I did all these things because I believed and I plugged the holes. What are your holes that you have? What are the misconceptions of your father that you're putting onto God, transfer on, onto him? It's not true. He's a good father. But you have to find the lie that you believe. And that's all detailed on that teaching. You know, the one on Facebook and Rumble is good, but it's a group one. And so it's much more intensive if you get the teaching that's on our website, Condensed Emotional Training. And we don't just give you that. We heap up the free stuff so that you get like, I want to put, uh, I just decided, Shelly, I want to put um, kingdom finances. Okay. So you can undo the misconceptions that religion taught about finances. All right. Once you undo that, you got a foundation to jump off from to then pull your own lie and then come up out of the poverty mentality. Can I add on to that? That's so beautifully said. And when I discovered personally that, you know, at the age of 29, 30, a couple of years into, so, or pardon me, right away, I found out about the matrix of the IRS, et cetera. And so you've already shine, shown a light or been, the, the light has been shown on the matrix and the cabal. That's the first step to dispel the darkness. So what I did as a stay, I wanted to be a stay at home mom. I went to corporate America and went, oh my gosh, this is a zoo and only lasted a couple of months if that, and then began to have home-based businesses so I could do our own taxes legally and be able to give less to the government we went to try and find out how to be sovereign. We went to Mexico and they wouldn't allow the man who was teaching it to let his plane landed. And they said, you got to take off. Well, now we know that our CIA was managing Mexico and 
our drug cartel was in all countries, which is no longer the white hats have the cartel. So it's those baby steps of just knowing you've already taken the first step. You see the matrix for what it is. What was that? What year was that, that you went there? About 1990. Oh, okay. And then, you know, so many truthers have confirmed you already are a sovereign being, child of God, and you've got the Christ light within you. So every choice and decision that we make while still living under it has power to either continue being a part of it or to say, no, thank you, I'll pass on that and go within. And, and I would like to comment on the sovereignty issue. You know, there's a lot of people that are giving you self-help ways to get your sovereignty back. But my advisor said that it's better if you don't work on it yourself because that you're probably going to make it harder. They'll have to change some things because they're going to get it ready for you automatically. You won't have to do anything. You're just going to get it automatically. Beautiful. Thank you. That's how I feel at this point. We're so close to having this all open up. And so we need to be open and willing students to learn from what we're taught. I just put one more ex other question. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to let you know You're if that's sufficient. I can put the questions up like that. Would that work? Um, I can't really see it very well on that. The balloon. I, can, I can read it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Okay, so this is from Rumble, her woundness. I know who that is, and she's in Canada. Um, I've always known in my heart that religion was a form of control. What resources do you recommend that we can explore to find the real truth, i.e. books, versions, etc.? Well, I somebody on Facebook asked me, what is your method of studying the Bible, the code book, and that's where I found my freedom. So I was in um, that prison. It was a prison in my marriage for 25 years where I, I had no ability to do anything. Um, even if I, you know, back when we were wearing nylons, if I spent um, money on nylons with grocery money, I got punished for it. And so he, this guy would... Um, not just yell at me for doing something outside of the rules, but he would punish me until I cried. And he was not going to stop until I cried. And I found a way to escape the, the scene by escaping into the real world. And I could withstand it for a long time, but he wouldn't give up. He would just keep going. And so um, that that whole matrix of religion was to keep me in subjection. So, you know, if you, as a woman in a, in a Christian home, you, if you went to the pastor and said, he's beating me, they would tell you to go home and submit. That was the worst horrific subjugation doctrine. And there are still women who are still in it today. I dissected the code book to prove that it was not true. And I have a teaching called abusing Christian homes, mm. right? It's time. If, if you really think that God created you only with one purpose to serve a man and his dream, that's it. You have no destiny. He, and, and if you do have a destiny and you're not allowed to blossom in it, it doesn't matter if you hear from from God about about anything about the future if you can't utilize it because you're under someone else then you're useless. What are you doing here? Why? Why would you want to live in in that kind of environment? And so I proved the whole thing in that teaching because I had to find my own way out. Thank you. <clears throat> but anyway, I, um, what I, I said all that to say I detailed my process on Facebook. Um, I don't know how what what we can do to get that. We could send it to you um, I, and your followers, followers could get it. I don't know how else we could get it out to people. Which... Well, we can post it on uh, Allison can post it on my face on my website and we okay. can uh, offer them 
um, the opportunity to download anything that you want to have yeah. under your own little yeah, thumbnail. put it in a PDF form. It's just it's a text form format on Facebook, a post, a written little uh, tutorial, I guess, mm -hmm. of my process and how I used the the book the book <laughs> as a code book. And also, I want you to know that I help women to in my book to recognize that there are so many things we can do in our relationships because I've been married, it'll be 45 years next month. Wow. And so I have, I, I know what it's like to feel like it's called the power of sexy relationship story from the heart to live your passions and embrace your purpose because it, it, there are so many skills and tools that I learned how to manage my relationship with a man who is primarily, you know, left brain and doesn't access, he does occasionally, and he has been, he's had that spiritual warrior awakening and, and blossomed through it. And then when the election fraud went down, it was like that collapsing into what the is going on. And so that's when I dove in and started digging and finding out what was going on. And of course he couldn't hear it. It took a while, yet what he could hear was the medical fraud and learning about uh, the, med the medical industry and what they did to us. And I was so grateful for that because we could connect on that. And so it's possible if you're in a relationship that you need a lifeline for that you can receive it and accept it to be able to cross this finish line together. And it really is about not engaging in the ego of being right, but finding the tools that can help you reclaim your power, go to the women's circle or men and women co-ed. You know, relationship training is deep and it's profound because there's been just as many men who have been abused by women, starting from their mothers and then choosing a woman who is similar to that abuse and then reenacting that whole play. So thank you, Tressie. Yeah. We'll get your stuff put on the website. And I want to say, just because you said um, empowering women, this cedar fever, the emotional root of this is giving away my power. <laughs> and I think, it, you know, I've, I've come out of being a people pleaser, but there are certain aspects. And one of them is my landlord. I don't require that he take care of things because I know he's not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be his friend and he's a sweet man and I understand his problem that he can't, he can't figure it out. And so, but the thing is, you know, I have given away too much power and Absolutely. So I have been begun to change those things. And uh, Shelly and I have had lots of conversations about my new truth that I need at this point in my life. So it's, it, it's interesting that you said that we all have to regain our power yes. in order to become our full, who we really were, were created to be, to regain all of that in order to reach our highest destiny that, and God wants that. We don't want to be like, I've, I've seen a lot of Christians where they have this relationship with God that, I heard this one lady say, Papa, can I have a puppy? And he said, no. And I'm like, really? I don't have a relationship like that. I have this love relationship. I know what he likes. He knows what I like. It's just this beautiful dance of love. And the, But the thing is, if you're going to stay in that childlike father, uh, child relationship, do you never graduate? You couldn't stay there your whole life, or are you going to come graduate and sit beside him on his throne? Are you going to co-rule and co-reign? He said, "I don't call you servants anymore." You know, like a child, you have to graduate and become an adult and and operate with your creator the way an adult would. You know, for what it's worth. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. We have another question. I was just uh, sending uh, 
somebody was asking the title of my book, The Power of Sexy Relationships. It's on Amazon, and my name is Nancy Kerner. So this message, this question comes from Jay, and he asks, <clears throat> how can we help veterans like myself and others that have been lied to, oh, bless your heart, been tested on, been used? Will there be programs for them? It has just been so hard after thinking that I was serving my country to find out that we were just doing the dirty work of the cabal. Please give us some advice. Bless your heart. Thank you for your service. We think about you and hold you in our hearts every day. Well, Jay, you have a very high calling and uh, all of that pain is going to be undone. And you are a hero right now because you, it, it's the intent of the heart that matters, not what actually happened, but what you wanted to do that is counted you, to you as if you did it. So you don't have that stain on you. You just get rid of that. But also understand that everybody has projects who understands the RV and is involved in the RV. Everybody has projects. President Trump's top project is the vets. Yes. You will not be missed. You are going to be exonerated. You are going to get blessed beyond your imagination and every area of life. You will be blessed so much. You will, the past will be healed and you will come into new life and you're going to have a fresh start at life. Because of the med beds, you're going to be able to start over in joy and in the real world. So you will not have lost anything, but you will be the most beautiful person because you had to process that. And you came out shining like gold. And I am so honored to be able to be, have the veterans as part of my projects. I, will, I want to serve those who served us. Right. And so, as I said on my last trek, all veterans come to our healing center for free. And that includes pre med beds. Before we get those, we were going to have every kind of suppressed healing cure known to man. We're going to start right away with what we have and build from there. And you can stay on the property for free for a couple of weeks and, and just have some pet therapy, animal therapy with our tiny cows and tiny donkeys and tiny horses and <laughs> we have tiny sheep too. <laughs> That's beautiful. Is your retreat center open yet or is it coming in the future? You know what I, I did for a long time is I used to have healing weekends in my house and it was quite an endeavor, <laughs> but I would nurture these people that came on every sensory level. Um, like the food I would, you know, I love hats, but I love dishes too. So I'd put out a, a different place setting every day that was so elegant and so beautiful. And um, then I would uh, do my home cooking and I would plate it like a chef. And they would be like, they would cry in their breakfast because they couldn't believe it. And then I would give them my um, two and a half hour signature treatment that had eight different kinds of therapy in it. And they would be completely transformed. We would pull the mother load of all lies out of them and they would be transformed. They would be a changed person when they left. And so if I could do that in the past, we can open right away. As soon as we get through the bank and get funding and get the property and all of that, we have all kinds of therapies that we can implement right away. So that is so exciting. You and I have such parallel experiences. I started the You Are a Powerful Woman's Retreat in my home that my husband oh. and sons built an additional retreat room onto. Wow. And we would just have like 20 women, then 40 women sleeping over for the whole weekend and 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 doing that healing. And then I started having them in Hawaii. And I stopped going when the COVID oh, yeah. pandemic came in because 
I saw all my friends masked up yeah. and getting their shots and being proud of it. And I didn't want to get a fake ID card saying I was vaxxed. I didn't want to play the game at all because once you got there, I'd have to be, give them my phone number so they could track my phone. And I just said, no, I'm not playing. So once we're, I'm hoping February, I'll be able to return and have the retreats again and, and Tressy and veterans we are open and welcome to you coming and facilitating and helping with the healing. We have many men who are in the community who are really good with helping men to release that pain and open their hearts and nice. take their power back too. So this is so interconnected. There's there's no mistake that we're here talking today. And yeah. I would love to come to your retreat. Yeah. Hey, Sammy. Nancy, can I just tell you right now in front of all of your followers that I believe that you have a very high calling, very much like President Trump. You have a lot of the same ingredients in your DNA that he has. You are an excellent, excellent businesswoman and you know how to create money and to fund what your plans are. And your plans are big. And um, you actually have uh, a wealth uh, almost like a a stamp of uh, wealth on every cell of your DNA. So that wealth comes to you. And that's why you found out about the RV, but you will be a mouthpiece in the world on an international scale. And I believe that you were a wild woman uh, in your <laughs> early days and you're still a wild woman. And once we get through this, that wildness is going to come back to you and I see you like dancing over the mountains and just uh, bringing the light to uh, people all over the world in many different formats that God is going to bring. And they will, uh, you will be a part of bringing back the foundations of the world. And people will, I know that even now people feel stable and strong just being in your presence. And that's why they follow you. And so uh, I can't wait to see how this is going to evolve and there will be no impossibility. I, I know that you don't believe in the impossible. And so you will do big things on a big scale. And it's like you, I see you like a horse um, behind the, the gate and you're pawing the ground, like, let me out, let me out. I want to get this thing taken care of. I'm going to clean up the world here. <laughs> You're so powerful, beautiful. Thank you. That landed in my heart. And I need to share with you since you said that, when I asked Spirit about two years into sobriety, about 1990, when I started attending Unity Church, I asked Spirit, when will I know my true purpose? And the response I heard, felt, resonated, came to me, and it was decades. And I, and I accepted that. I said, I am a child in life at the age of 30 at that time, I have much to learn. And so I surrendered to being a student and learning as much as I could. But what you just said was very prophetic because that's what I heard. It would take decades. Thank you. Okay, do we have another question? <laughs> Woo, it's getting hot here with Tressie. People are loving you, girlfriend. Sweet sister of the light. Jenny... Jennifer Gentry asked, Tressie, do you offer training and classes so that those that want to help others in your techniques? Yeah. So uh, we will have also a school on the Healing Center property, and we are going to be announcing it and inviting not just a massage therapist, because that was part of my uh, healing uh, therapy that I did, uh, but also uh, people that want to take others through emotional cleansing. Um, I, that's the class that I just finished teaching for three years. It doesn't have to be that long of a class, but because we were kind of stuck in the matrix, um, COVID baloney, um, I just kept teaching. And so I have tons of classes that will be offered in a two week, um, training. And you will also go through inner healing on a huge level during your time there 
and um, you know, we'll wine and dine you, and we'll have um, the Texas uh, dances, which are healing in themselves. We're going to have a big uh, shabby chic barn, and it'll be the most incredible time of your entire life. So, yes, I hope you come. But I oh. would start with that condensed emotional training. That is a condensed version of the whole big intensive class. So start with that, get used to it, get working with it. And then when you come, you'll be ahead of the game. So beautiful. Yeah, I was just getting ready to launch when this happened in January 2021, um, Infinite Wisdom a practical course in healing and ascension. And so I love that you already have everything in place to help people immediately. You are well prepared. So here's a question, Tressie, or <clears throat> is life, oh, this is from Michelle. Is, is life to talk with you? I'm looking to do the same with my fellow veterans looking for added ways to heal myself and my fellow brothers and sisters. And I think you just covered a lot of that. Yep, I did. Tressy, this is from, oh, never mind. I thought there was a new one that popped up. Okay, so if you have your questions ready, Allison and uh, Shelly, we're ready for more. The chat's on fire. You, you, thank you, people, for showing up and sharing your questions and comments. Instead All right, Allison. To get it up on the stage. I'm so just doing the best yeah. we can here. Make and do. What's your knowledge? And thank you again for all your time and effort and wonderful passion. I'm, I'm, everyone is thoroughly enjoying it. This is another one from the Rumble chat from her wound is, what's your knowledge regarding galactic assistance to help Gaia and mankind through this new world? Uh, I actually uh, don't have that terminology, so I don't think I could be a good one to answer that. Um, I work with my angels. I mean, I have many angels, but um, I just met one um, Epicurious was his name, and uh, he was all excited. He's uh, he looks like a black man, and man, and he's got a twinkle in his eye. And he was making a um, a vehicle for me to drive, and it was vintage, of course, and very cool. And he was all excited because he it was time, and what it was representing was my unique vintage type of ministry that was about to come on the scene, which uh, will ev involve a, a USO tour where I'll go on the road. I'll probably start, uh, I want to start doing concerts as soon as I get this, uh, these nasal pass passages cleared up, I'll, I'll be doing them on the trek. And once we um, get out there enough to create a a crowd in each area. I'll go to each state and I'll go to many countries as well and do healing concerts to heal people from the trauma and the uh, absolute upheaval that we just went through together. Well, I'm looking forward to having you in Hawaii doing your special unique healing uh, techniques. And so I've noticed in the comments, some people are saying, I want to help. I, I want to help teach. And so my response to your enthusiasm and your passion to teach is if you're following Tressie, take her courses so that you have an understanding of what she has done in her processes yeah. so that you can be that person if you want to work with her. Because Tressie won't be able to manage the one-on-ones with everyone. That's what I've discovered in 35 years. I can't do one-on-ones. And that's why we shift into groups and then retreats and now podcasts, et cetera, to reach more people. But we still need that, the you know, the face-to-face -to, -face to be together and to have the community as co-creations of healing. And so if, you, if you're feeling that call from spirit, then yes, please, we need you. Yeah. And we're still um, accepting resumes for people that want to work with us either virtually or at the healing center. So we're going to look at everybody's resume. And I mean, even right now we're needing people like graphic artists um, for 
uh, virtual work and also uh, social media and um, technical, like for, um, for music, people that know how to use GarageBand or something like that. And uh, it will have to develop slowly as we're able um, to bring people on staff, but it, we want to get it all organized so that we know who we want to talk to. You know, another thing is that you can volunteer, like Tressie said, when when I was learning, I volunteered everywhere I went. So I was on this many years of being a volunteer in many different communities so that I could learn, like relationships was one and uh, prosperity or whatever. So being a volunteer is free to get the wisdom from whoever you're volunteering for, whatever community or tribe that is. And it's huge. My husband used to say, well, when are you going to start making money? And I said, well, I'm still in college. I'm still an apprentice. I need to learn this. And spirit hadn't told me go yet. I was wait, you know, so, and then one day it was like, now do it now. So thank you, Tressie. Do we have any more questions? I think that's a wrap unless Shelly sees more. I oh, am not, so I am trying to keep up with it all. This is yeah, beautiful, so but I'm still trying to make the it work. Industry. Oh yeah, here it is. Let me put this up. I just saw that Maybe one, sorry. What's gonna happen with the music industry, how they've known it prior? Yeah. You know, uh, someone's asking about what is going to happen to the music industry. You know, musicians have been robbed. I mean, my music was pirated all over the world. They made the profit so I couldn't pay my bills. You know, that's how it, it seemed. And then a lot of people would say, oh, I love your music. I burned 10 copies for my friends because I love it so much. And I'm like, you don't understand, do you? <laughs> You just robbed me. I spent thousands of dollars producing those CDs and you just took it. But um, anyway, I think they're going to come up with a way, a quantum way to, to protect musicians. The other thing is the frequency music is going to totally change everything. I believe, I believe that we can create a med bed chamber like an um, enhanced energy chamber during my concerts. And that's what I'm planning on. So I'm going to do all new CDs. And, you know, um, God had told me way back when they started coming out with the idea, even though we've known it for a long time, they it was starting to be publicized that we were, they changed our the intonation of our instruments to, you know, A440, and it should have been right. 432. And my instruments are tuned to 440, and but people were being healed during my concerts. And God oh, said, no. it was your intention, which is just like with essential oils. It, you The intention behind the oil is the power behind the oil. And then also the fact that he literally, his breath was blowing through me and I could feel it. And it actually propelled me. And sometimes I felt like I was not on the standing on the stage, I was above, like several feet above. Uh, and so because of that, he says, when my breath came through you, it changed the frequency to the right healing frequency. And then when I was on, um, what was that show I was on? And it was fantastic. Brian said, oh, chance, chance, uh, chance, chat, chance. That's yeah. what it is. Anyway, um, I didn't get a chance to thank him. I think his name was Brian, but he, I said I was going to get all new flutes and he said, you don't need to get all new flutes. You are the frequency that comes through the flutes. And I was like, wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I did just get a new bamboo saxophone. You'll be hearing that soon. Um, what? No, not saxophone. I have a saxophone. I got a bamboo. It's in that drawer right there. You want to get it for me? The middle drawer? I think it's the top one. I just got it. I don't, I can't really demonstrate it for you right yet, but um, that's it. Yeah. These were actually gifts to me from Eric, the flute maker. I've been working with him for many years. And so I said, Eric, you got to make me new flutes. And I, I want a bamboo clarinet. 
It is so beautiful. Oh, it's so mm. nice. And it is tuned to the right intonation. So I am really looking forward. It sounds just like wow. um, Benny Benny Goodman or whatever. It's just beautiful. So there's lots of wonderful things coming in the in the next few days. I got mm -hmm. my sound system all back that got sold for drugs. I, I got, I mean, it's not the big studio that I used to have, but I got enough that I can start hopefully Saturday. I think I'm just going to commit to it. Even if I can't breathe that well, I'm going to play. I can play. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, looking forward to that. He oh, so healing. Beautiful. Thank you. And we're going to see, a lot of our musicians who we thought were passed over oh, right. have been in witness and protection. Um, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a holy moment when we begin to see all the people who had to take themselves out of the matrix completely yeah. Yeah. in order to survive. And because, you know, what would you do? I'd want to go away too. Fame, right. having fame isn't the gift that everyone thinks it is. It's a prison. Yeah. You can't go anywhere and have people not recognize you and hound you for autographs and interrupt your dinner. And yeah. so um, we have a, and thank you for that question. I, I was trying to grab the name of the person who asked it on the music. So my apologies, I didn't get it in time. So this one's from Teddy Lynn. I asked how we might get paid via Nisera if we don't have a bank account, only a disability card, please advise. Well, but you get disability benefits, correct? Then it's just going to be automatic. It will end up in your bank account or whatever, wherever you get it, you're going to get it. It's a stream, uh, an avenue that they're, they'll use to make sure you get that. So you will get $7,500 a month because of disability. Okay, one second. I got to answer my brother real quick. Okay, well, I want to thank um, Ravenheart because she said from a fellow flute healer to another, thank you for your service to humanity. And um, she had also asked, how do we um, connect with our purpose? And so, you know, one of the things that I say is, what are you passionate about? What brings you the most joy that if you did it every day, it wouldn't feel like work and go within and commune with the creator and yeah. your higher power, God, whatever works for you, that you can actually surrender your ego and listen for the response, not only in that moment, because it can be immediate, yet notice the signs that show up. The phone rings, the email comes in, the podcast is shared. Notice who it's coming from. Notice everything. Connecting in nature is my favorite place. And water is consciousness. So taking hot baths and, and you know, for me, I the room fills with light. I started seeing auras two years into sobriety when I took the next step in my spirituality and received Christ in my heart. Then I started seeing auras and light around people. It was scary to me at first. I thought I was crazy. And then having dreams and showing me exactly a scenario that would play out days or a week later. And that scared me and freaked me out too. However, once you receive the, the, the gift of being connected to spirit, then you'll have an opportunity to be that student of saying, okay, I get it now. This is the new normal for me. We were taught not to have access to our intuitive uh, yes. intelligent system. We were numbed down so much that people don't realize this is what you can expect. We don't need to wait. We yeah. can access it now. And, and actually, the answer to that question is within that teaching, condensed emotional training. I, t I show you how to find it, and you'll find it fully. Like, it will blow your mind when you, when you see what, you, what comes up of the exercise that is in that teaching. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so do we have any more questions? <clears throat> we Okay, here's one. Whoops, sorry. It came and it went. 
here we go. This is, oh, this one was from Jennifer Gentry. Tressy, do you offer training and or classes to those who want to help others in your techniques? Yes, that's what I was talking about with the school. We're going to have a two-week training for uh, people. We'll have a different class for massage therapists. Um, and then we'll have a different class for those who just want to do the, um, the live pulling emotional cleansing. So, yep. I love that. I heard you talk about the live pulling the other day, pulling the lies out and then replacing it with uh, your focused intention. And I, I feel like I concur on everything that you have been sharing today. And I really thank you for that. Here's a question. Pardon me. I just want to make a, a reminder to Shelly. Let's grab that preparation for the live pulling party and the live pulling party link and include it with the condensed emotional cleansing training when they get it. So they're going to get the huge packet. Okay. It'll be like uh, going to school. You're going to get beautiful. everything. That's what a beautiful gift, everyone. Thank wow. you. And the thing is, this is going to prepare you to go through the bank, your bank appointment and go into the new world. You, We need this. We have got to pull a lie or two to get through to be able to fly. You know, so this is that's why I believe this message is so important right now, it, because it's going to prepare you for the highest destiny that's just around the corner. Beautiful. And to be, remain calm when you go to your appointment, because it's going to be way more than you ever dreamed of. And so, you know, you breathe, you take a brown paper bag, <laughs> breathe, and enjoy every savory moment of this journey. And so Kathleen asks, medical question, what will happen with the pharmacies? I'm on Synthroid for life. What if I run out before I get to use a med bed? You know, you don't have to worry about anything. They've got all of that planned out and covered. And so they're not going to take what you've been using away from you. So it'll be everything that we're getting ready to change is going to be gradual, very gradual. It'll be a transition that takes as long as it needs to so that no one is in a panic or, or has any reason to fear whatsoever. Beautiful. Okay, we have another one. And thank you for these questions. KRN asks, what do you think will happen to recorded music that's satanic? Will it stop being sold? Or will people not want to listen anymore after they learn the truth? Great question. Yeah, no one's going to want it. They'll probably burn it in the in the streets. They'll have burning parties when they find out what they did to us with it. Yeah, they, same they won't with, be sold. Nobody wants it. <laughs> and the same with uh, movies as well, right? What, yeah. Do you feel like those are all going to go away? The the cabal created movies. No, it's a transition. Everything's a transition. But as truth and light comes into the world, they they will not be able to exist anymore. You know, people are always concerned about how are we going to get rid of all of the cabal. Well, what I said the other night was. The military has the evidence of the steel in the Dominion voting system to 2014 at the county level. So even Can in your own county, those disgusting people that are ruining your, your city, like mine, it is just totally cabal controlled, has become a human trafficking playground and a drug cartel. We just had a murder there. Oh, it's just awful what has happened in this little town. And um, those people are going to go. They they caused it. They they drew it. They brought it. And they will be taken out. We don't even have to work on it. So that's going to change. And the, it will not be popular to have their headset anymore. They'll be run out of town. The people will not put up with their horror any longer. And they'll either get you know taken away to prison or they will not be able to, to prosper in their deeds ever again. Beautiful. Um, wow. Somebody was just saying that they burned 90 Disney movies. Yeah, that's a, that's a challenging one, isn't it? 
it's a it's a cognitive dissonance for so many people who who don't know yet and have been brought up with disney and all of that well is there anything else you want to say or would you like to uh are you ready to wrap i think uh, she only has one yeah uh, someone was asking where to the resumes i just want to give them that email oh yeah go for it the uh, tressie's team 77 at gmail.com okay we can put that in the chat maybe tressie's okay tressie's okay. team 77 at gmail.com for resume submission resume submission yep yeah. i want to give shelly and allison a great big can you bless them with your love because they do so much behind the scenes <laughs> late nights i mean allison was working all day yesterday oh. really long day and then woke up to frozen pipes in texas no. and so you know it's uh we wouldn't be able to be here with you without our our support team and without you showing an interest in Tressie. my goodness you have blown up her Facebook and her Rumble channel. Mm -hmm. And it's a confirmation for her that what she's speaking to all of us is important. And thank you, Tressie. I <clears throat> Would you like to do a closing or, you know, because usually I just really um, say something at the end with my prayer candles. Yeah, with go my for intention it. intention candles. Okay. <clears throat> So these are called love lights. I've been using them since I opened a holistic health counseling practice for women in the year 2000. And these ha are a modified version that my friend Jackie Lepp in Canada created for me because my other ones were worn and torn, being <laughs> put in suitcases and traveling all over. So these are called love lights. They have love on one side and prosperity on the other. And I don't make a profit off them. However, she is on our uh, face on our my website, if you'd like to purchase any. Um, welcome to the Prosperity Playground. This is where high, high consciousness, you know, high vibe spiritual people who are wanting to or have already taken their power back and recognize that you have divine superpowers within you right here, right now. And from my heart to your heart, I want to just say thank you, Tressie for being a light in the world and shining it bright and being an example of being a real woman who goes through life's challenges and has the skills and tools to pick yourself up after you've been attacked or crucified, whatever it is, so that you return to your heart and are healing beautifully from your wisdom, from your experience and giving us strength and hope. The world is a much better place with you shining bright in it. And thank you to everyone who tuned in today and will be watching this because you are the chosen ones. Thank you, Spirit. Have a beautiful day. Blessings to you. And I look forward to having you back again if you're yeah. interested because um, – it's really refreshing to me to find a, a light worker. That's what I call people like you, a light worker who has really done the inner healing journey themselves, aren't just preaching and speaking, you know, to be, you know, in a microphone. And it takes a lot to accept the call to do what you're doing. So blessings, my friend. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. I love that. <laughs> And so with that, we'll say aloha. We'll see you next time. Take love care, you. everyone. We love you. I hope you enjoyed today's show. You can find me at nancykerner.com on social media. And remember the truth about you. You are a powerful and prosperous person.